My body hurts, Father. My spirit feels the same. Depression is trying to consume me. I groan in the day and in the middle of the night. I just want to sleep through the night. I try to pray, but so often I doubt that you hear me. Aaron tells me it's the opposite, that I shouldn't fear, and I'm so grateful for her, but even with her reassurance, my sadness and my loneliness and my pain persist. Even when I'm with people, I feel alone. I have no direction. I can't see your purpose when I feel alive. When will I feel alive again? When will my smile be real again? When will your song bring me joy? I need to hear your voice. I don't. If this is all my fault, reveal it to me, and please forgive my hidden faults. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. I know that I'm supposed to believe in your goodness, that I should see it all around, and, 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 and there are days that I do. But I'm struggling to find my way, Lord. So many of my family trust you. My wife sings your praises every day. Even my children know you and call on your name. My friends speak only good of you. My church exalts you every time they reach out to our community. Why can't I? I hide away in my house or in my head, never allowing others in. I smile and wave, but my hidden tears become a gasp for breath. I feel useless. And still, even now, I call on you. I call out to you. I'm so confused. I speak to you. I know that you're here. I want to hear you. I believe you are my strength. I believe you are my stronghold. I believe you are the one who heals my aching bones. You heal my heart. So heal me. And help me, Father, overcome my unbelief. May I find shelter only in your ways, Father. In your mercy, meet me here. Hear my cry, answer my pleading, and more than just for me, and more than just now, help your people sing of all you do. When we're weak, give strength to our voices, and when we're strong, may those who aren't, me, now, still see your goodness in such praise. Whatever we know, whether me, I'm sorry, Whether we know you or not, whether we're far away or close, may we run towards your goodness. Father, quickly meet us where we turn. In your Son, the Christ, I can only pray. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry out, by day, but you do not answer. By night, I am not silent, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. In you, our fathers put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and were saved. In you, they trusted and were not disappointed. But I'm like a worm, not a man. I am scorned by men and despised by my people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast upon you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Shout with joy to God all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing praise to your name. Come and see what God has done, how awesome his works are on man's behalf. He turned the sea into dry land. His people passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. He rules forever by his power. His eyes watch the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him. 
Come and listen, all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and heard my voice in prayer. Praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. Dear Heavenly Father, there are many little things that bring me joy. Little things that might just get me through a single day, like getting kisses from my puppy all over my cheeks and nose and ears the second I walk in the door. Waking up an hour early to do yoga under the dewy sunrises you paint each morning. Borrowing my sister's shirt and having the day-long comfort of smelling her all-too-familiar Chanel perfume. Having more than enough blessings to share with all the people you bring into my life. My army of close friends who protect and uplift me, bringing me ever closer to you in the process. Or knowing that after I had turned away from you and sinned in the worst ways of my life, thus far, that at the end of the day, your love for me was never ceasing and ever present. Knowing that no matter how much I lose and how many struggles I must overcome, you will always replenish me with more love and new understanding than I could have ever previously imagined. Knowing that there is nothing I could possibly do to make you love me any less to make you ever be mad at me, or to make you not accept me as your child. God, it is such an indescribable feeling to have my heart fill and then overflow with the joy you give me. These joys, great and small, give me that overwhelming sensation despite how much I do not deserve it. The joys you bless me with make me want to laugh and cry and dance and scream all at the same time. But more than anything else, it makes me feel so close to you. Experiencing joy is the closest feeling that I think I will ever comprehend of knowing how amazing your love for me truly is and feels. Yet I feel it so often, like every time you sprinkle all the copious little bits of joy in my daily life. Sometimes it's just a sudden heartwarming happiness that demands my face to grow into the biggest, most uncontrollable smile I can possibly create. And other times, it may just be letting myself break into a thousand pieces only for you to get on your hands and knees and help me put each shattered fragment back together. Whatever it may be, you are the source of it, God. You are the truest origination of all the unforgettable, joyous moments that I hold so dear. God, you are my greatest comfort and most amazing joy.
Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you in this, a time of sorrow. We are currently grieving the loss of two church members, Dr. Robert Haney and Jerry Scheibel. Sometimes when death comes to ones we love, we feel lost and empty. We may even wonder if we can go on without our loved ones. And just a couple of weeks ago, we participated in a service of all saints in which we remembered those of our congregation who passed on to their glory in the past week or in the past year. Nearly every one of us here today can easily remember those loved ones we have lost. Some of those passed peacefully after living a good, long life. Others passed after, after fighting difficult battles with cancer and other diseases. Still others were lost to us tragically and unexpectedly through heart attacks or, or accidents. Our hearts hurt. We don't know how we can go on. We don't all grieve the same, Lord, and that's all right. You have made us all different. Some grieve openly, even loudly. Others grieve inwardly and silently. Some fall into deep depressions, but others seem to be so resilient. We praise you and thank you, Holy Spirit, that in our grief you comfort us. We feel this loss and sorrow for the rest of our lives, but your peace makes life bearable once again. Thank you, Jesus, for saving us by the blood that you shed on the cross. And through your resurrection, we can have the assurance that our loved ones who have gone through the door of death are now with you in paradise. Lord, we ask that you bring your peace and comfort to the Hanny and Scheibel families during this, their time of loss and sorrow. In Christ's name, amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, today I pray for my children, Elena and Chloe. I pray as they continue to grow that their childlike faith that they have now stays unwavering through their lives. Lord, as they grow up with both parents working in the church, I pray they choose to come to church on Sunday mornings and that the choice is one made with gladness and willingness. And though we may be moving around quite a bit, I pray they will always do well adjusting to a new church, to a new town, new school, and new friends. And as they grow and attend different schools, I pray there will always be an open seat at the lunch table next to them for new friends. That they will always accept a person, no matter that per person's ethnicity or background. And that the friends that they make are lifelong friends. When people meet them for the first time, I pray they notice something different about them. And that that difference is you, Lord. In the dark world that we live in, Lord, let my girls be your rays of light. And as they continue to grow, Lord, and find love, I pray that that person treats them with kindness and respect and that they love them for who they are. I pray they are successful in whatever they choose to do in their lives. If they become mothers, I pray they teach their children love and kindness. 
but most importantly, about your love and kindness. Lord, may you always be the center of their lives and their light in the darkness. If they ever are hurting and they have no one else to turn to, I hope they turn to you. If they have questions, I hope they find the answers in your love and in your grace. Answer me when I pray to you, my God who does what is right. Make things easier for me when I'm in trouble. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. People, how long will you turn my honor into shame? How long will you love what is false and look for new lies? You know that the Lord has chosen for himself those who are loyal to him. The Lord listens when I pray to him. When you are angry, do not sin. Think about these things quietly as you go to bed. Do what is right as a sacrifice to the Lord and trust in the Lord. Why is everyone hungry for more? More, more, they say, more, give me more. I have God's more than enough. More joy in one ordinary day than they get in all their shopping sprees. I go to bed and sleep in peace because Lord, only you keep me safe. Let us pray. My precious Heavenly Father, I thank you at the age of six for the call to preach your gospel. When family and friends said that's not a good life, you showed it to me as the most precious life that could be done. I give thanks to you, Lord, for your nearness and for your blessings that come in the hour of our darkest times. I thank you, dear God, for the times when thick clouds and heavy fog seem to hide your presence. I thank you then that we can lift our hands up through that darkness of the clouds and of that ever-present fog and feel the grip of the almighty God's hands. I especially thank you, my dear God, for the night when surgeons, guided by your hands, put this body back together again where there was little hope in their diagnosis that I would ever see, speak, or walk again. During those hours of surgery and the months to come, you were correcting their thoughts by your promise given in Jeremiah. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. For Lord, in the valley of death and uncertainty, I feared no evil, for thou wast with me. You strengthened me by thy rod and thy staff, and give thanks to you for faith in the face of adversity. We thank you, Lord, for showing me that faith must be tested so it may be turned into a personal possession only through the conflicts we face. Thank you now, Lord, that I know whenever I fall, you are there to catch me. That when my heart is saddened, you are there to hold me. Then when I weep, it is your hands that wipe away my tears. That when I am broken, you put me back together again. I thank you, Lord, this day and always for being my Lord, 
my Savior, and my God. And in your precious name we pray it. Amen and amen. Simply stated, prayer is talking to God. God wants us to to pour out our hearts. He wants us to pour out our brokenness. He wants us to come to him at our point of need, whatever may be in, in our hearts. Jesus told his disciples that uh, God knows your prayers even before you pray them. And he still wants us to pray. For those of you that are parents, you know the, the joy that comes when, uh, when your kids came home from a day of school or, or, or a day of activities and, and they, they shared with you what, what they had been doing. Or maybe they were out with friends or, or maybe at a sleepover and they come home and, and tell you about the things that they were doing and the, the fun that they had. Or maybe a college student that is away at school and, and the joy that comes when, when they chose to, to call you and to, to tell you what was going on in their life. Uh, sometimes when those calls come, you think, what's wrong now? But, uh, but still, they've called. They, they've reached out to you. Or maybe it's uh, adult children that are out on their own, maybe raising their, their own families. And, and yet, when they call, the, the joy that, that comes with, with that call, because it's as they call you, you find out what's going on in their lives. God already knows what's going on in your life, but yet he wants you to call him. He wants you to come to him in prayer. He, he wants you to, uh, to, to let him know what, what's going on in, in your heart and, and in your life. Again, parents, we, we, know, we may know our, our children's needs. We may know what is best for them. There may even be ways that that we can, can help them out, but, but particularly if we've got uh, teenage children or, or adult children, we can't barge in. It's normally an issue of when, when they've come to us, when, when they ask us for advice or, or for help, that's the, the point at which we can, can respond. You know, God's timing is perfect in responding to, to our needs. And, and often that perfect timing comes after we go to him in, in prayer and pour out our, our hearts and, and, and confess to him what it is that we're, we're dealing with. You know, talking to God is often one-sided. We, we normally do all the talking when we're talking to to God, but talking with God involves uh, talking and, and listening. It's much easier for us to talk to God than it is for us to, to listen sometimes. In Paul's first letter to the church in, in Thessalonica, it, Paul wrote, Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Continually giving thanks to God. Lord, even though I can't see your love, your wisdom, your power in in the circumstances, give thanks for the circumstances that God is going to meet you at that point. Prayers of of thankfulness can change our perspective. Prayers of of thankfulness Thankfulness can actually produce a, a joyous spirit within us. The Apostle Paul goes on to, to say, uh, give thanks. He, he doesn't say give thanks for all circumstances, but, but he exhorts his readers to be thankful in all circumstances. Not all of life's circumstances are good. But there is always something in those circumstances for which we can give thanks. When Robinson Crusoe was was shipwrecked, you know, he was shipwrecked on a lonely island, and and he thought of both the the good and the bad. You know, 
he was cast into a desert, a, a desolate island, but he was still alive when all of his company on the ship had drowned. He was divided from, from all mankind, but he was not starving. He had no clothes, but he was in a hot climate, so he didn't need many clothes. He was without a means of defense, but he saw no wild animals. He had nothing to speak of, but, but God had sent the, the wrecked ship so near to the shore that he could get out all the things that were necessary for his survival. So he concluded that, that there was not any condition in the world so miserable, but there, there was something positive for which he could be thankful. We all know people who, who uh, could find something to be thankful for in the worst of circumstances. And we also have all known people who could find something wrong in the best of circumstances. Which one do you prefer being around? Which one do you believe is most content within their spirit? This morning we're talking about leaning into prayer. How do we trust God a, a little bit more in, in our prayer life? How do we engage God just a little bit more in our prayer life? I wonder if in the midst of our honesty and our brokenness, that we might also find some reason to be thankful. A grateful heart can change our perspective. A grateful heart can change us. Let us pray. Lord, as we come to you in prayer, I pray that we might come to you with honesty, but also that we might come to you and, and recognizing that no matter what the circumstances are around us, that you are still good, that we still have something for which to, to be thankful. Lord, may you give us eyes to see how you are at work even in the midst of adversity. And Lord, give us thankful hearts that we might be able to encourage others and that our own perspective might be improved. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen.